welcome students today's topic is de broglie's concept of matter waves okay but as i told you we will take one previous uh, jam or uh, gate question and then proceed into our topic so today's question is the state of a system is given by psi ket equal to phi 1 ket plus 2 phi 2 ket plus 3 phi 3 ket okay where phi 1 phi 2 and phi 3 form an orthonormal set orthonormal set okay find the probability of finding the state system in the state phi 2 okay that is a question find the probability of finding the system in the state phi 2 he is asking us up to two decimals it's a numerical answer type which appeared uh, three years back in gate exam okay at the 2017 i think around 2017 find the probability of finding the system in the state phi 2 up to two decimals okay right this we'll see after at the end of our lecture okay now we will go into de broglie's concept We have seen uh, photoelectric effect and Compton effect. Both, what is the significance of these two effects? Photoelectric effect and conf, uh, Compton effect have confirmed the particle aspect of light beyond doubt. Okay, when Max Planck came out with his quantum theory of light to explain black body radiation, physicists were not ready to accept this quantum theory. Okay, because accepting quantum theory means right, entire optics should be modified, even EM theory also should be modified. People were not ready to do that. So, if not today, tomorrow, with the help of wave theory only, we will try to explain black body radiation. They thought. And there is a story also when Max Planck went into the German physics association with this, this quantum theory concept. Uh, he was necked out of the institute <laughs> okay so later on of course that same max planck has become the director of that uh, institute now it is known after his name only max planck's research center in germany so what do we conclude from this or understand if you want to become director of any institute first you should get kicked out of the institute okay then ultimately one day you will automatically become its director okay right so whatever it is so later on so that quantum theory was kept aside okay einstein was the first scientist in 1905 to use max max planck's quantum theory and successful in explaining photoelectric effect the next scientist was niels bohr right the next scientist is compton in 1922 he went a uh, step ahead of einstein and max planck also he said we need not treat that light uh, light uh, packet of energy right we can call it as a pure particle only it will have some mass it will have some momentum and we can apply conservation of momentum principle to it and he did the same thing and he could successfully explain compton effect that's what we have seen so the significance of photoelectric effect and compton effect is they have confirmed the particle nature of light they have confirmed the particle nature of light beyond doubt okay so at that point what happened people were now forced to accept quantum theory at the same time they were not ready to forego wave theory also so the first time in physics around 19 around 1922 okay right what is light dual nature of light was accepted in physics okay light has dual nature they said okay this actually the concept dual nature is not acceptable in physics okay mathematics mathematics and physics are exact sciences isn't it see d by dx of sin x is always cos x okay 2 into 2 is always 4 only you cannot say sir in our village we take it as 4.5 okay or in the morning it is 4 in the night it becomes 3 etc like that 2 into 2 is 4 for always all everybody always everywhere Similarly, right, uh, these are all known as exact sciences. In an exact science called physics, dual nature means light sometimes behaves like a wave, sometimes behaves like a particle, they said. Okay, this was, so though it is not very convincing, there is no other go because if I take wave aspect of light, interference, diffraction, polarization are becoming easy to understand. If I take particle aspect of light, right, uh, black body radiation, Compton effect, photoelectric effect, right, as, uh, structure of the atom, they are becoming easy. So this theory has some advantages, that theory also has some advantages. So they were forced to accept this dual nature for the first time in physics, okay. Right, the moment people accepted that light which was thought to be a wave can sometimes behave like a particle, immediately a scientist called de Broglie 
okay louis de broglie we say okay he said that material particles like this pen or electron or proton or whatever it is or a chalk piece also should behave like waves he said okay very bold statement see einstein's special theory of relativity and de broglie concepts are two very bold statements in physics okay though they brought tremendous changes in the way physics is looked at okay statements are very simple okay right and there is no big uh, mathematical complexity in proposing what you are in de broglie proposing this concept of matter waves he simply said that when light which was thought to be a wave is accepted to behave like a particle sometimes why not material particles right behave like waves sometimes that's a simple bold statement okay because nature loves symmetry okay in nature everything should be symmetric when a is behaving like b b also should behave like a that's a bold statement by de broglie okay so he said that if not only saying that he could derive an expression for whenever i say that a material particle behaves like a wave okay we'll talk about wavelength okay so de broglie has derived as derived in one expression for the matter waves wavelength also so according to de broglie every material particle every material particle of mass m okay moving with a velocity v every material particle of mass m moving with a velocity v will be associated with a wave matter wave it is known as okay whose wavelength is given by lambda equal to h by p okay what is p p equal to mv is the momentum of the particle okay is the momentum of the particle lambda equal to h by mv he said he has obtained this expression nobody knows when he has derived this whether this how far this is correct nobody knows okay but de broglie could derive this expression lambda equal to h by mv so the important conclusion we can raise what every metal particle of mass m moving with a velocity v okay will have momentum mv so it will have de broglie wavelength means de broglie concept is applicable only for moving particles remember that okay If the particle is not moving velocity equal to zero momentum is zero there is no wave lambda equal to infinity means there is no wavelength at all so de broglie concept is applicable for moving particles that's also a previous examination question in some msc physics entrance okay straight simple question okay right so de broglie's concept is applicable for moving particles and he has derived this expression okay and to exp okay and he himself does not know whether it's it is a proposal that's all given by de broglie he himself does not know how far is proposal is correct later on what happened is two scientists davis and germer okay two american physicists were doing experiment they were studying how a beam of electrons gets scattered from a nickel target so they have sent a beam of electrons low velocity electrons electrons are accelerated through 40 volts 50 volts 60 volts like that right they were sent on to a nickel target and after the scattering in which direction how many electrons are going they are studying some experiment okay as uh, happens quite often okay some thing happened okay and uh, air got leaked into their apparatus okay right so what happened in order to de means nickel target got oxidized in order to deoxidize it they have heated it to a uh, high temperature and again replaced it in the apparatus and did the experiment this time they started getting peculiar results okay earlier that beam of electrons okay was behaving differently right now the beam of electrons right from a nickel target when is i send a beam of electrons some electrons are going like this some electrons are going like this in specific directions only some electrons are going like this means right electrons are not getting scattered in all directions uniformly or continuously right you are finding electrons in one specific direction again from here to here you don't even find a single electron most of the electrons are found to go like this and again from here to here you don't even find a single electron right again some electrons are going found to go like this okay if you draw the intensity distribution for this one the graph has come like this okay the graph appeared this way okay the graph appeared this way it is like this
a graph something like this the intensity distribution was found to be like this okay means most of the electrons are going in the straightforward direction okay some electrons are going like this i'm making at some specific angle again some electrons are going up to this point okay this type of pattern will come across only in diffraction single slit diffraction pattern of light diffraction is a property of a wave light okay in single slit diffraction pattern right we get like this the intensity distribution will be like this this is called zeroth order first order second order like this okay this is first order this is second order second order intensity okay right and they are there it's a surprising result for them because they are not using any waves there they are using a beam of electrons okay electron beam right is having an intensity distribution similar to that of single slit diffraction pattern means what okay means electron beam must be behaving like waves okay means they are also undergoing they are also showing the diffraction property okay so they calculated using Bragg's law 2d sin theta equal to n lambda okay this is uh, this formula is used for x-rays okay x-ray diffraction X, what wavelength x-rays okay what wavelength radiation will give such a diffraction pattern okay they calculate when they calculated using that formula they found that whichever radiation has lambda equal to 1.66 angstroms okay whichever wave radiation which has a wavelength of 1.66 angstroms will give such a diffraction pattern from a nickel target they have taken the interatomic distance in nickel and substituted here okay right they got this result okay they are not using this 1.66 angstroms radiation means it falls in x-ray region but they are not using x-rays they are using a beam of electrons okay right now it was a surprising result later on within some after some time they came to know that somebody in europe called de Broglie, okay he's saying that material particles also behave like waves and he has derived one expression that the, the um, wavelength of that matter wave is lambda equal to h by mv they heard about this okay concept and they have applied here they have used an accelerating potential difference of 54 volts okay they have used an accelerating potential difference of 54 volts okay so electrons accelerate through 54 volts what is their kinetic energy 54 electron volts okay this is the kinetic energy of the electron from this they calculated the momentum of the electrons and substituted in this formula surprisingly they got lambda is equal to 1.65 angstroms almost in agreement with what they got from De Bra what you call Bragg's law Bragg's law is a well established law by the time nobody has any doubts about Bragg's law but um, people People are doubting about this new formula only proposed by De Broglie but a new formula proposed by De Broglie is giving the same result as that given by one established law it says that this formula must also be a correct formula okay so in one experiment right uh, this De Broglie formula got verified immediately another scientist Thompson they repeated the experiment with fast moving electrons okay davis and germer have used an accelerating potential difference of 54 volts so kinetic energy of the electrons will be 54 electron volts only david what you call g thompson has experimented with very high velocity electrons he has used an accelerating potential difference of 50,000 volts 60,000 volts like that okay so electron accelerated through 50,000 volts right what will be their kinetic energy 50,000 electron volts that is 50 KeV. Okay, when electrons are accelerated to such high accelerating potential difference, such high accelerating potential difference as that their kinetic energy is so high, you have to use relativistic expressions. Okay, I cannot take simply mass of the electron as m, I have to take it as m not by root of 1 minus v square by c square. So, right, Thomson, right, did that relate, took that uh, relativistic correction also into account, and he also got uh, what you are same result that beam of electrons, right, behaves like waves and undergo diffraction okay means two experiments one is davison germer experiment done with slow moving electrons and thomson's experiment done with fast moving electrons both experiments have confirmed beyond doubt that right electron beam right undergoes diffraction that is electron beam is behaving like waves okay so that's De Broglie's concept also got proved by 1923. Okay, what De Broglie came out with uh, a bold postulate that material particles should behave like waves got experimental verification within no time. Okay, so two experiments have confirmed that 
right electrons behave like waves means what they must be having some matter waves wavelength lambda equal to h by mv okay then what are these waves means what type of waves are these okay are they mechanical waves or electromagnetic waves means right one more surprising result what happened here is just before this step lambda equal to h by mv right de broglie got every metal particle of mass m is be moving he is associated with a matter wave means that wave also should be moving isn't it what is the velocity of that matter wave velocity of the matter wave u equal to c square by v he got okay this result was obtained before this one lambda equal to h by mv this formula is found to be correct only two experiments have confirmed beyond doubt okay but what about this u is velocity of the matter wave u is velocity of the matter wave c is velocity of light a constant v is the velocity with which the associated material particle is moving okay velocity of the material particle means here we have two velocities one is the velocity with which particle is moving is v the velocity with which its matter wave moving is u okay right now what is the peculiarity in this result u equal to c square by v okay right he got this relation but this is a peculiar relation okay if carefully observe this relation you will find the peculiarity okay what is that v is velocity of the matter wave sorry v is the velocity of the particle right according to relativity no material particle can travel with the velocity of light means for any material particle of having some mass velocity should can never be equal to c or greater than c velocity should be less than c always okay this is the limitation imposed by special theory of relativity okay all material particles must have their velocity less than c but here the velocity is right u equal to matter by velocity c square by v when i put v less than c u will be greater than c c square by v no isn't it so u is coming to be greater than c means matter waves are traveling with velocity greater than that of light okay which is not acceptable according to the special theory of relativity nothing can travel faster than light okay but maybe people are even ready to accept that maybe special theory of relativity may be wrong okay here we have found now that matter waves are capable of traveling with velocity greater than that of light nothing wrong okay right something what einstein said may be wrong okay so they thought that maybe they have found new kind of waves which are capable of traveling faster than light okay so they were ready to accept even this result also but the problem is here particle is moving with v velocity okay the associated matter wave is moving with a velocity right u greater than c v is very small whereas u is greater than c means say this is my pen okay when my pen is stationary no concept of material matter wave etc etc when i throw this pen with some velocity v okay pen will not even cross this studio room but right this associated matter wave of this pen will cross what you call solar system and goes because it is traveling with a velocity greater than that of light okay so material particle particle will not even cross this room whereas its matter wave is crossing right somewhere the solar system which is not acceptable particle here and its matter wave there okay so wherever the particle is its matter wave also should be there only means the velocity with which that matter wave moves must be equal to the velocity with which particle moves. that's what common sense says isn't it okay when i am running all my body parts also should come with the same velocity isn't it my hand cannot leave me it can even move with a different velocity isn't it okay so so my hands my head everything should move with same velocity if i am running okay suppose say my head is moving faster than my body what will happen my head will leave my body and goes forward all meaningless results will come so similarly then this metal particle is moving its velocity and matter wave velocity should be equal but what de broglie got is u is greater than c particle is moving slowly its matter wave is moving with velocity greater than that of light that is not tenable okay that's not acceptable so there is some problem with this formula okay this problem was solved later on by quantum mechanics using the concept called uh, group velocity okay 
So later on, 101 modified, even Max Planck's original quantum theory got modified, De Broglie's concept also got modified later on by wave mechanics or quantum mechanics. Okay, they said that a, mat a material particle is not equivalent to a single wave, but equivalent to a group of waves. How many infinite number of waves superimposing each other? Okay, in such a way such that uh, they undergo constructive interference only over the region occupied by the particle and destructive interference everywhere else means they form a wave packet they form a wave packet only in the region occupied by the particle okay and wave packet disappears everywhere else okay means our material particle is not equivalent to a single wave but equivalent to a wave packet or a wave group okay right where from this wave packet has come this wave packet is a possibility uh, when we concern um, what you call in waves and oscillations we study about beats when two waves of slightly different frequencies superimpose amplitude becomes alternately maximum minimum maximum minimum like this okay that is a known phenomenon so when two waves of slightly different frequencies superimpose alternately amplitude becomes maximum minimum maximum minimum like this one maximum one minimum is known as one beat number of beats per second is known as beat frequency okay that is an understood uh, well understood phenomenon when same thing when infinite number of waves superimpose there is a possibility that all those waves right will undergo constructive interference only in a limited region and form into a wave packet and everywhere else right due to destructive interference they give minimum intensity means this wave packet is due to right a superposition of infinite number of waves so forget about uh, what you call the infinite number of waves what is important to me is this wave packet only because this wave packet is representing my particle so what is my particle means how do i visualize okay particle is not a particle particle is not a single wave also particle is visualized as a wave packet so now what happens the velocity with which that wave packet moves that is called group velocity vg okay normally wave or phase velocity is given by v equal to right omega by k or equal to uh, nu lambda okay into 2 pi by 2 pi 2 pi nu is omega lambda by 2 pi is 1 by k so omega by k we write whereas group velocity vg is equal to d omega by dk the general formula for group velocity is d omega by dk means you have to differentiate omega with respect to k we will get that group velocity okay so what is important here means right the particle is not equivalent to a single wave it is equivalent to a wave packet okay that wave packet moves with velocity known as group velocity so that group velocity came as group velocity of this material particle matter wave came as equal to particle velocity so the problem is solved like this okay means what the situation is like this <coughs> okay in quantum mechanics or in wave mechanics right after this de Broglie concept right we say in classical mechanics a particle of mass m is moving with a velocity v we treat it as a particle okay how does quantum mechanics treat this it won't treat this as a particle it will treat this as a wave packet it will treat this as a wave packet okay the velocity with which this wave packet moves is vg means okay means i don't see this as a particle i will see it as a wave packet means if i throw this pen okay classical mechanics says a particle is moving quantum mechanics says a wave packet is moving that's the only difference both are looking at the same thing okay one is calling it as a particle other one is calling it as a wave packet okay whatever it is whatever you call wherever the particle goes the wave packet wave packet also should go there only means the group velocity of the particle must be equal to the particle velocity and that also has been obtained vg equal to v in your bsc final year this is a small proof for five marks in bsc final year exam the question prove that group velocity is equal to right uh, particle velocity for a material particle for a matter wave like that okay so vg equal to v the problem has been solved so u equal to c square by v 
right is meaningless okay means wave velocity of matter waves is meaningless what is important for matter waves group velocity is only important that group velocity is always equal to particle velocity so that problem got solved that that way okay now but one more information we get these matter waves right are not electromagnetic in nature that one thing i can understand okay why all electromagnetic waves always travel with the velocity of light c only okay m waves always travel with c velocity in vacuum whereas these matter waves are having different velocity means what they are not electromagnetic in nature then what do these waves indicate <coughs> they are not mechanical waves in the physical sense nothing is going up and down or nothing is moving back and forth wherever that wave packet is there probability of finding the wave packet has maximum amplitude probability of finding the amplitude uh, particle is more wherever the wave packet has minimum intensity probability of finding the particle is minimum means they indicate the position probability of the particle that's all okay wherever this wave packet is present particle is likely to be present there okay wherever wave packet is not there particle is not there okay so everything the particle's position depends on the spread of the wave packet the spread of the wave packet okay but what particle will be found only between these two regions only okay because the wave intensity is zero here Okay, intensity is zero here. Probability of finding the particle zero. Probability of finding the particle here is zero. Probability of finding the particle is maximum here. Okay, that is the significance of matter waves. That's all. They are not any mechanical waves, longitudinal transverse waves, or electromagnetic waves. They simply indicate the position probability of the material particle which is moving. Okay, that's how we can understand. Now, so De Broglie concept got uh, verified experimentally also. Later on, people have modified some drawbacks of de Broglie's proposal okay <clears throat> they have modified that they made certain things unimportant okay so whatever it is de Broglie's concept has given rise to or accelerated the physics towards quantum mechanics okay so now we say can say that every metal particle moving with a velocity v will have some matter wave whose wavelength is given by lambda equal to h by mv or h by p okay this is now the acceptable formula okay now <coughs> in general this momentum p kinetic energy k equal to what kinetic energy let us take it as ek kinetic energy ek equal to p square by 2 m we can write okay so p equal to under root 2 m ek under root 2 m ek so replace this moment uh, formula with uh, this one okay lambda equal to h by under root 2 m ek h by under root 2 m ek when mass and moment uh, velocity or momentum of the particle is given and if he asks us to find out de Broglie wavelength we will directly use lambda equal to h by p or h by mv okay instead if mass and kinetic energy are given how to find out de Broglie wavelength lambda equal to h by under root 2 m ek this is the formula okay now for charged particles okay we have another relation <coughs> whenever a charge q is accelerated through a velocity v sorry uh, accelerated through a potential difference of v volts it acquires a kinetic energy right ek equal to qv okay this is known one whenever a charged particle q is accelerated through a potential difference v right it gets accelerated towards opposite uh, potential negatively charged particle moves towards positive potential positively charged particle moves towards negative potential okay in that process of acceleration they acquire some kinetic energy what is the kinetic energy acquired by charge q when it's accelerated through a potential v ek equal to qv right okay <coughs> so for charged particles now what do i write for charged particles particles in general for normal particles when kinetic energy is given we use this formula when momentum is given we use that formula for charged particles accelerated through accelerated through v volts accelerated through v volts okay ek we can take it as equal to qv now substitute this ek equal to qv in this formula okay what do we get lambda equal to lambda equal to h by under root 2m qv 
okay lambda equal to h by under root 2m qe okay where m is mass of the particle q is charge of the particle and v is the ag potential difference through which the particle got accelerated okay h value is known right now we can substitute this now when i am talking about specific particles whose mass and charge are known to me what do i do i'll substitute those values h is known 2 is known everything is known if m and q are also known i'll substitute those formula value those values simplify this right convert me in uh, that into angstroms and we'll have one ready-made masala formula with me okay just like a ready-made masala we have okay so for electrons and positrons okay now for electrons and positrons for electrons and positrons okay what is positron antiparticle of electron it has same mass okay same charge only thing is opposite sign that's all okay particle and antiparticle pair we call both have same charge quantity of charge is same mass is also same only thing is one is having negative charge other one is having positive charge that's all okay so i know the mass of the electron 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg okay charge of the electron 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs h value 6.6 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule seconds two values known so what do i do i'll substitute the all these values here okay i'll get the answer in except v okay only put okay except v i'll substitute remaining value and convert that into angstrom so what do i get lambda equal to under root 150 by v if v is in volts lambda will be in angstroms if v is in volts lambda will be in angstroms remember this is the masala formula only for electrons remember okay if you cannot combine different masala okay right biryani masala is different chole masala is different okay chat masala is different similarly this masala is only for electrons and positrons because i have substituted electrons mass and electrons charge only so root 150 by v now in the objective exam the de Broglie wavelength of a particle right uh, accelerated electron accelerated through a potential difference of 150 volts what is its de Broglie wavelength lambda equal to root 150 150 lambda equal to one angstrom electron is accelerated through 75 volts what is its de Broglie wavelength root 150 by 75 root to 1.414 angstroms electron is accelerated through a potential difference of right 50 volts root 150 by 3 root 50, uh, root uh, how much root 150 volts means root 3 1.732 angstroms okay electron is accelerated through a potential difference of 300 volts what is its de Broglie wavelength 150 by 300 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 is 0 0.707 angstroms like that straight forward okay what happens if he gives electron is accelerated through 100 volts okay now you cannot you you don't you don't use this formula 150 by 100 means uh, right 53s are 52s are root 3 1.732 try to divide with 1.414 no okay what is root 150 root 144 is 12 root 169 is 13 root 150 means it should lie between 12 and 13 only so it is around 12.24 12.24 by root v when v is in volts 12.24 by root v will give you the de Broglie wavelength of the electron in angstroms directly so electron is accelerated through a potential difference of 100 volts what is its de Broglie wavelength root 100 is 10 12.24 by 10 1.224 angstroms so if the voltage is a perfect square use this formula if voltage is something related with related with 150 use this formula okay both are one and the same <coughs> depending on the voltage value use either this or this but this formula is applicable only for electron and positron okay what about a proton okay what about a proton a proton also has same charge of that of electron means for protons i'll write now okay for protons okay for protons right what is mass of a proton rest mass of proton is 1836 times the mass of the electron but its charge is also right same as that of electron only thing is positive charge that's all so charge is same okay mass only mass for electron sorry mass for proton is 1836 times the mass of the electron so whatever formula we got for electron right will get divided by root 1836 
okay then that formula will be applicable for protons means for proton the ready-made masala formula will be lambda equal to I divide this uh, 12.24 by root 1836 if I simplify I'll get 0.28 by root p 0.28 by root v volts okay so what is the de Broglie wavelength of a proton accelerated through 100 volts simply root 100 is 10 lambda equal to 0 0.028 angstroms okay lambda will be in angstroms directly this is for a proton this formula is applicable only for a proton this formula is applicable only for electron and positron okay right next one for an alpha particle what is an alpha particle alpha particle is a packet of two protons and two neutrons so mass of the alpha particle m alpha can be taken as four times the mass of the proton okay and charge of the alpha particle q alpha can be taken as plus two double due to two protons double the charge of the proton okay so what changes will come here okay we have substituted for proton i got 0.28 okay what's the difference between proton and alpha particle alpha particles mass is four times more charge is double that of a proton okay so inside here for mass i'll have to have four multiplication factor charge is also double so four into two factor will come inside the root okay four into two means it is root eight that is two root two factor means whatever result i got for a proton i have to divide it with two root two then that will be applicable for alpha particle okay so for alpha particles lambda equal to okay 0.28 by 2 root 2 if i substitute and simplify i'll get 0 0.101 by root v okay when v is involved lambda will be in angstrom this is the formula for alpha particle this is the formula for protons this is the formula for electrons okay so for an alpha particle alpha particle accelerated through 100 volts what is its de Broglie wavelength right root 100 is 10 point zero one zero one angstroms will be the de Broglie wavelength of the particle okay uh, alpha particle okay right now what about neutrons okay neutrons are neutral particles so for neutrons i cannot accelerate because they are not having any charge we cannot accelerate how to increase the kinetic energy of a neutron but only by heating it because it has no charge we cannot accelerate it okay so whenever a neutron is heated to a temperature t okay what is the kinetic energy of the neutron kinetic energy of the neutron ek equal to 3 by 2 kt see average kinetic energy per particle per degree of freedom is half kt a neutron has three degrees of freedom so the average kinetic energy of neutron thermal neutron will be 3 by 2 kt that is kinetic energy formula okay so in the general formula de Broglie wavelength lambda equal to h by under root 2 m ek substitute 3 by 2 kt for ek so what do you get here 2 and 2 they cancel h by under root right 3 mn kt okay so de Broglie wavelength lambda for a neutron heated to a temperature t is lambda equal to h by under root 3 mn kt where mn is rest mass of the neutron k is boltzmann's constant 1.38 into 10 to the power minus 23 joule per kelvin t is the absolute temperature to which that neutron is heated okay now for neutron also i know the rest mass of the neutron i know k value i know 3 value i know h value i'll substitute all those values and again i'll get one more ready-made formula okay which is applicable only for neutrons what do i get okay lambda equal to okay right 25 by root t okay when t is in kelvin lambda will directly get in angstrom units angstrom units okay so what is the de Broglie wavelength of neutrons heated to a temperature of 625 kelvin root 625 is 25 so lambda equal to one angstrom be right okay so these are some shortcut formulae for different part de Broglie wavelengths of some 
particles okay deuteron what is a deuteron deuteron is uh, the nucleus of deuterium what does a deuteron contain deuteron contains one proton and one neutron so mass of the deuteron md equal to two times the mass of the proton okay charge of the deuteron is same as that of electron only okay same as that of uh, proton or electron okay so what will be the difference between the formula of proton and formula for uh, deuteron okay lambda equal to h by under root 2 m q v okay when i put mass of the proton and charge of the proton i got 0.28 by root v volts i got what's the difference between proton and deuteron Ju charge is same for both only thing is mass of the deuteron is double that of proton means here instead of 2 mp instead of mp here i should put 2 mp means one more root 2 factor will come okay means 0 0.28 divided by divided by 0 0.14 okay uh, what is root 2 root 2 is 1.414 1 by root 2 is 0 0.707 means we should multiply this 0.28 with 0 0.707 that will come to around 0.2 approximately right 0.2 by root v volts this is the de Broglie wavelength of a deuteron okay deuteron is accelerated through a potential difference of 100 volts what is its de Broglie wavelength 0 0.02 angstroms okay we can verify if you want okay what is 0 0.28 into 0 0.707 okay 0 0.28 into 0 0.707 equal to 0 0.197 nothing but 0 0.2 only approximately okay so this formula is applicable for this formula is applicable for deuterons okay right this formula is applicable for alpha particles this is what you call for neutrons okay means for different particles the de Broglie wavelengths are found like this and how do you expect questions at uh, graduation level in msc physics entrances okay questions will come uh, proton and an alpha particle are accelerated through same potential difference find the ratio of their de Broglie wavelengths or two particles upon deuteron and alpha particle have same de Broglie wavelength okay find mm, the ratio of their accelerating potential differences okay questions will come this way right we will see some problems based on this right in the next video thank you and the about uh, the problem what i have written the solution to the gate problem is the problem in the previous uh, the previous gate problem was the for a system the wave function is given by psi ket equal to phi 1 ket plus 2 phi 2 ket plus 3 phi 3 ket find it and where phi 1 phi 2 phi 3 form an orthonormal set find the probability of finding the system in phi 2 state okay so probability of finding the system is nothing but uh, integral psi star psi dv okay that's nothing but psi by psi okay psi by psi for an orthonormal set means they should be normalized psi by psi should be equal to 1 okay so we should see right when we look at this what you call wave function we will clearly know right uh, 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square okay psi by psi because orthonormal orthogonality psi 1 psi 2 will be 0 psi 5 1 5 3 will be 0 phi 2 phi 1 will be 0 phi 1 star phi 1 phi 1 square phi 2 square phi 3 square so right 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square we are not getting 1 okay means psi by psi if it is 1 it is normalized wave function it is not 1 it is coming to be right uh, mod 1 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square it's coming to be i'll equate it to n that n is coming to be 1 plus 4 plus 9 it is 14. so what is the normalized wave function normalized wave function is 1 by root n psi ket becomes the normalized wave function okay so therefore normalized wave function will be 1 by root 14 1 by root 14 okay 2 by root 14 right 3 by root 14 okay 3 by root 14 okay so this is the normalized wave function now what is the probability of finding the system in any state probability of finding the system in nth state is mod cn square okay mod cn square is the probability of finding the system in the nth state 
ओके मॉड सी एन स्क्वेर ओके वॉट इज मॉड सी एन स्क्वेर सी एन स्टार सी एन ओके हियर ऑफकोर्स सी एन आर ऑल रियल ओनली ओके सो सी एन स्टार इन सी एन बोथ आर सेम वी कैन डायरेक्टली राइट सी एन स्क्वेर सो वॉट इज द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ फाइंडिंग द सिस्टम इन फाइव टू स्टेट मीन मॉड सी टू स्क्वेर मॉड सी टू स्क्वेर इज नथिंग बट टू बै रूट फोर्टीन होल स्क्वेर टू बै रूट फोर्टीन होल स्क्वेर दिस इज द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ फाइंडिंग द सिस्टम ओके मॉड सी टू स्क्वेर दट इज फोर बै फोर्टीन ओके फोर बै फोर्टीन इज द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ फाइंडिंग द सिस्टम राइट सो वॉट इज फोर बै फोर्टीन ओके फोर डिवाइडेड बै फोर्टीन इज अराउंड पॉइंट टू एट सिक्स ओके जीरो पॉइंट टू एट सिक्स सो इज आस्किंग टू पॉइंट टू एट सिक्स इज आस्किंग अप टू टू डेसिमल्स ही आस्ट ओके दिस इज टू मार्क्स क्वेश्चन ओके अप टू टू डेसिमल्स मीन्स द आंसर इज पॉइंट टू एट द आंसर इज पॉइंट टू एट और पॉइंट टू नाइन थिंग यू कैन पुट ओके बोथ विल बी एक्सेप्टेबल राइट सो दिस इज ए सिंपल स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड क्वेश्चन फॉर टू मार्क्स विच हेस्ट कम जस्ट कम इन गेट एग्जाम ओके जस्ट टू और थ्री फोर ईयर्स बैक ओके right thank you